Hello everyone. Welcome to Folkloric and Historic, a new YouTube channel dedicated to the folklore and history of Britain and Ireland. We're doing this as a labour of love and because this is something we find really interesting. We'll be focusing on folklore from the British Isles as that's what we're most familiar with. But we may do some videos about stories from other countries if we have enough interest and if they're requested. So if you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. So this is our first video and it's the story of the Fairy Cup. There was no sound, save for the wind, and most people might have felt a bit spooked by the walk, but the man had made this same journey many times before. There was only one part of it that had him feeling weary. He traipsed along, all the while getting closer to the old barrow, which stood a little way off from the roadside up ahead of him. Looking over towards it, he shivered, and not from the cold. Ever since he was a little boy, he'd been told stories of the barrow, that it was the home of the little folk, and that no one should ever go near it, especially at night. For it was at night, they said, that the little folk would feast. Anyone who entered the barrow during a fairy feast disappeared, never to be heard from again. He remembered being told by one old woman in the village, who was learned in such matters, that one should never eat or drink anything offered by the little folk, as doing so would put one completely and irreversibly under their power. He could see the barrow now, outlined against the night sky. Perhaps it was the drink or the lateness of the hour, but it seemed to almost glow slightly. And it may have just been his imagination, but there was a sound carried on the wind which sounded like music. It became clearer as he drew closer to the barrow that he could indeed hear strange, sweet music. Although he knew he should just ignore it and continue on his way home, the otherworldly music seemed to entice him. And he stepped off the road and onto the grass, cautiously stepping forward towards the barrow. Approaching the mound, he now saw that the glow was coming from an opening in the side of it, almost akin to a door. The man couldn't help himself and went inside. What a sight stood before him. A great hall full of people dancing, feasting and making merry. There were tables loaded with every kind of delicious food and drink you could imagine, all on plates platters and cups of gold, decorated with dazzling gemstones. At the far side of the hall, on a mighty golden throne, sat a king. Seeing the man standing there in the doorway, this king motioned to a retainer, who promptly brought over a beautiful golden cup brimming with liquid. Drink, the retainer bade the man. Our king bids you drink. You are welcome to join our feast. Our ale is the sweetest that will ever cross your lips, so drink. Join us and be merry. The man took the cup and brought it to his lips. He was about to take a gulp when he remembered the words of the wise old woman. The words that she had told him all those years before. He poured out the ale and dashed out of the barrow, the golden cup still grasped firmly in his hand. He ran and ran, fearful that the little folk would pursue, not stopping until he reached his home. When he would tell others of this story, nobody would ever believe him, until he showed them the golden cup as proof.
Versions of this story are many. In some tellings, the fairies pursue the thief, giving him no peace, or curse the cup, the thief suffering from an endless stream of bad luck. In these versions, the cup is often given to a church or a nobleman in hopes of lifting the curse and gaining relief from torment. Such a tale has been used to explain the presence of unusual cups in churches or stately houses. One such example is that of the exquisite vessel known as the Luck of Edenhall. In this particular story concerning the Musgrave family of Edenhall, Cumberland, there is an additional piece of folklore which states, if this cup should break or fall, farewell the Luck of Edenhall. In truth, the look of Edenhall was probably made in Syria in the 14th century and came somehow into the possession of the Musgrave family over the centuries. But the fairy cup legend is certainly an ancient and widespread one, with versions found in England, Denmark, Germany, Norway, Sweden, Scotland and the Isle of Man. So why is this legend so pervasive? And why are the basic elements so similar? There are innumerable round barrows all over northwestern Europe. These are associated with the Bronze Age Beaker people, who spread throughout Europe at this time, bringing horses and the Indo European languages most Europeans speak today, and displacing or absorbing the Neolithic farmers who were already there. As their name suggests, the Beaker people made distinctive pottery cups with considerable regional variations. Excavations of barrows have frequently revealed that such cups were often buried within, usually made of pottery, although there are some notable exceptions. A shale cup was found in a barrow near Honiton in Devon, England, and in 1856 an exquisite amber cup was found in a barrow near Hove, East Sussex. However, most interesting of all have been the numerous gold cups which have been discovered. Two are known to have been found in Britain. The first was that found in Rillerton Barrow in Cornwall in 1837. Then, in 2001, a second gold cup was found in Ringlemere Barrow in Kent. The Ringlemere Gold Cup was unfortunately badly damaged due to modern farming, but seems to have been very similar to the better preserved example from Rillerton. It seems to me very possible, perhaps even likely, that other gold cups were found in barrows in the past, which have been lost to the historical record. It's not too much of a stretch to imagine the following scenario. A poor country farmer is ploughing his field, which includes an unusual raised bump of land. His plough hits something hard, causing him to stop his work. He kneels down to investigate and finds a clump of large stones in the ground. He notices something glistening between them and after some digging, unearths a magnificent gold cup. Telling the other villagers about his find that evening, he is informed by an old man that the raised bump of earth he ploughed over was once a fairy barrow. That gold cup belongs to the little folk, the old man warns, and only ill would come of keeping it. This worries the farmer, who takes the cup to the local church, explaining the story to the priest, who agrees to take the cup off the man's hands and keep it safely in the church. Do we have, in this scenario, a possible origin for the fairy cup legend? <laughs>